Right, today we're going to do the what's hiding in the grass activity from the spring home therapy packet. So what we're looking at when we do this activity, visual motor coordination skills, such as when coloring, cutting, and bilateral coordination, using both your hands at the same time for a task. In this case, they will be different tasks. Uh, so we call that asynchronous bilateral coordination. So you're going to need crayons, scissors, and glue or a glue stick. Um, I'm also going to be looking at following directions and sequencing the task. Going to integrate some counting as well, like counting the bugs while we do it. Okay, so we can see my assistant starting to color. Mom, can I see it? All right, hold up your crayon for us. Show me how you hold it. Let's turn it sideways. Okay, so her grasp isn't terrible yet. We're going to kind of adjust it a little bit. You see on the crayon where it has the squiggle line at the bottom? That's a good little visual aid for where we should put our fingers when we're holding it. Get a little bit closer to that. All right, so show us how you hold it now. All right, now go ahead and color. You can go up, down, side to side. It's all good. Go stay, ahead and color again. stay in between these lines. No, you only want to color in between the lines. And scoot our hand down a little bit more toward those black lines. Get your fingers down a little lower. There you go. See how she's holding the pencil and the paper at the same time. Both hands are active but doing different tasks. So this is a really big area for coloring, but you can see she's doing a good job filling in as much as possible of the white space. And she is stopping at the big dark lines. So that's all good. Um, alternatives, you could always try markers, uh, paint if you want to get really adventurous. So while she's doing that paper, I'm going to have my other assistant, who's a little bit older, color in some of the bugs so she has a good example of how they should be done. Uh, I instructed him cut. in a second. Wait till I get over to help you. So I instructed him to use different colors for the different parts and to stay inside the lines as good as he can. These bugs are a little smaller, so they're a little challenging for uh, a three-and-a-half-year-old preschooler. But for an almost seven-year-old, he should be able to stay mostly inside the lines and fill in the whole space. Okay, so now we're working on cutting. I had to set her up so her thumb was in this smaller hole. But now she's got both her thumbs on top. We can see them. And she's cutting along the big solid dark line. Doing a good job opening, moving forward, and then closing. A little hint I always try and work with the kids on is don't close them all the way because if you do then you got to kind of reset the paper at the end of the scissors every time. You want to close them almost all the way. She's doing an excellent job staying on that line. She's had a lot of practice over these weeks of uh, quarantine. Home school. Home school. Cut it all the way through. Get it all the way off. Excellent. Excellent. Now you're going to do the same why thing on this black line. So why don't you change how you're holding it? So, yeah. It's pretty and you can see when she wasn't school. set up, she went back to her original thumbs on the bottom. But now she corrected herself. Very good. You want yes. to hold it up a little bit. She like been doing there. So I had to set her up to uh, make sure she had the thumbs on top when she switched sides of the paper. She went back to what a lot of kids do, which is trying to use their thumbs down and hold the paper down on the table. I wouldn't recommend holding it as vertically as she is. I would keep it a little flatter, but it seems to be the way she wants to do it every time I try and correct her. She's not happy with it. So her way is functional, it just might not be the easiest. So now we're working on cutting the blades of grass. This is going to be a little bit harder because she has to stop at the end of the dotted line. 
It's not cut all the way through. So we'll see if she remembers that. Alex, you're doing a great job coloring. Keep it up. Do the last two so she can color the last four on that page. Okay. And see how he's doing short controlled movements, mostly at his fingers and wrist. And that's what that tripod pinch is for. Good grasp will help increase strength, mobility, and endurance for these kind of tasks. Good for writing later as he gets older. Uh, we can see while I was distracted looking at what he was doing. Kaylee has cut all the way through the line. Pretty common if you take your eyes off of a preschooler. Remember, we need to stop at that end. It might be easier if you hold the paper down a little bit like this so you can see it a little better and it's not folding over on you. Good. Make sure you go all the way and stop at the end. Good job. The dotted line stopped, so you stop. No, don't tear it off. It's not tearing. All right, so I explained to her I want to see her try and do the same thing he did. Color inside the lines and switch colors for different body parts. And she's trying. She's attempting to. Using different directional strokes, horizontal, vertical. I always recommend on these circle ones that we go around the outside first. Kind of go like a circle. Make it curves around the circle. Yeah, I want you to use different colors, but I want you to go around the curves. Like when you're making your letters with curves in them. Like C and D. And better. I find a... Uh, Reinforcing coloring around the edges first helps give more of a boundary, more of a visual cue for where to stop coloring later. So I try and work with kids on coloring the outside first, and then you can go faster inside without going outside as much. She's doing an awesome job, especially considering her age. All right, so the last part of this activity is going to be placing glue at the bottom in a straight line across and putting our grass on top of it. And we're gonna to have to put these other ones on individually, same idea. I don't, but I wanna see them. All right, use your glue. Put glue across the bottom. But then... You'll get to see the bugs again. That's sort of the fun of the activity. Get up near the top where the grass is. Up near the top. Top is up here for this. Let's go back across one more time. All right, now put your grass in the glue. It's got to go in the glue, honey. Down here. Push it down. No, the grass, not the paper. The bottom line that's in the glue. Daddy, no. All right, and I like using this kind of glue because Daddy. it leaves a good visual reminder of where the glue is still wet. It'll be purple. Daddy. Kaylee, it'll be fine. Put some more glue down here so we can glue these pieces in. You can see this task can be a little frustrating, but she's working through and following directions. Put the bottom of the, yeah, right like that. That was perfect. I don't want mommy to see my bugs. <laughs> She'll see it. Okay, and you wanted a little more glue here? Go ahead and put some glue there. Just a little bit at the bottom. All right. Now, no, no, we don't want to glue this down. So mommy will be able to see the bugs. All right, so now we're going to lift back the grass and see where our bugs are. I want, I want them to be like this. Like this. 
Yeah, so, well, that's the fun. Now you lift back and you count how many bugs you see. How many bugs are there under those grass? Three. Three, count them. Use your fingers. Show me how you count. One, two, three. Good. All right, now put the grass back and let's fold down the next ones and see where they are. Mm 